Hey, my name is Matan. Uh, as Andrew said, this is my first time in Music Tech Fest and it's really, really good to be here. And I'd like to speak to you about basically the three main aspects that I'm into these days when it comes to creating new music technology. Uh, but first of all, I'll just uh, have a quick introduction about what I do and who I am. So this is my company, it's called Shift, and it's basically focused on what we call innovation for purpose, which means using technology to create positive impact. We've worked with uh, municipalities and startups and organizations, and now we're focusing more on our own in-house projects. And I also have a mini label that has the festivals and events back home called Universal Unicorn. <laughs> it's pure nonsense. And I'm on tour these days. This is actually the last stop of a pretty long tour that started about two months ago. And uh, I was speaking uh, at TEDx at Jerusalem and at a Microsoft event called Think Next, where I did a music technology uh, oriented live show. And I've been to San Francisco and Los Angeles and the Israeli Burning Man. And now we're in Sweden and it's really strange because there's no night, there's no darkness. I'm completely disoriented. Uh, it's pretty awesome. And I want to speak about music technology. So the three main aspects that I'd like to focus on for the next few minutes are the physical element of music technology, how it corresponds to our body, the wearable element, how it could be uh, modified and turned into actual accessories and clothing, and the accessible element of music technology, which for me has a lot to do with the special needs population. And I'll get to this in a moment. So starting with the physical element, I like to divide uh, the music technology um, physical kind of uh, gamification into two different um, modes. The first one is the physical mode. It's voluntary uh, physical actions. You can move your head, you can use your voice, and in this way it's kind of similar to using an instrument. You can try and really control your actions and control the instrument that you're playing using your own body. A different mode will be the biological mode. The biological mode corresponds to involuntary actions. So your heartbeats or your brain activity are not things that you can consciously control. They're things that are happening in your body but can still be translated to music. So you're not exactly playing an instrument as much as the instrument is playing you. And this is a very interesting, I think, it's a very interesting uh, blurred line where as musicians, we tend to think about our precision, our technique, our musical ideas. But once we start using technology to translate our body into music, we're no longer in control. And this is a whole new way of making music. I think a good example of this is using EEG. Uh, it's become more and more widespread to use EEG in a musical context. And even though sometimes people do use uh, brain waves and brain activity to try and control the musical happening, most of the time it's pretty difficult to really play a melody or a rhythm using your mind, using your brain. I've been working for the last uh, year and a bit with an Israeli professor called Nathan Intrader, and he developed a technology uh, called Neurosteer that basically sends, using only three electrodes, 120 different brain features as data. And I've been using this data, uh, translating that into music, and playing melodies and different musical parts using that information. But obviously, I can't really tell my brain what exactly I want to play. It's more about like the electrical activity in my brain being translated to music in real time. Later on today, I'm supposed to play a live show using this technology. <clears throat> and I'm supposed to basically try and improvise along with my own brain. So when I was uh, referring to biological instruments earlier, that's kind of what I meant. I could play the guitar and say, OK, I'm going to play this chord, this harmony. But then whatever happens, in my body, involuntarily, is going to end up being music that I can't really control. We can't predetermine a scale or a context, and so we can kind of have a dialogue, a musical dialogue with our own body, but it's a whole different way of approaching making music. Um, so, for example, if I talked about the EEG technology, this uh, photo is from a, a really interesting hackathon where I worked with Sefi Udi. Sefi Udi is a paraplegic. Uh, he's in a wheelchair, and he can't move uh, anything other than his head. And what we did was basically uh, we invented the EEG musical interface to enable Sefi, who used to be able to play the guitar, to make music. And after a very, very long time of not being able to express himself musically, he was on stage in front of hundreds of people 
and music was coming out involuntarily out of his thought process. The most interesting part of this experience for me was that Sefi was able, he was the only person I've ever met actually, who was able to say, I'm going to stop the musical playback now. And then it stops. There's no music. Other people, including me, using the same technology, we have no control over this. The music just kind of fires off as our brain functions and it's not, like, not really up to us. Like sometimes there are very short breaks, but this guy, within 10 minutes of having this thing on, could literally make it stop for maybe 10 seconds at a time by really concentrating his attention. And I think this is hinting at uh, untold potential of these kind of technologies. Uh, next, I want to refer to the wearable aspect. The wearable aspect of music technology for me had a lot to do with Music Tech Fest. A lot of this happened while I was attending these events uh, in Paris and in London. But before that, there was a, a hackathon for the Google Glass called Glass Beats. The Glass Beats is actually the application I made at the Google Glass hackathon in Tel Aviv. So if you guys know the Google Glass, which pretty much failed, <laughs> um, it was actually a wearable uh, device with uh, a gyroscope and a screen and voice recognition all put into a pair of glasses. So what I did when I uh, first got my hands on this technology in 2013 was immediately turn it into a musical instrument. And the way we did this, I'm going to show you a little bit, uh, was basically to track the head movements. And by tracking the head movements and applying them musically, up, oh, I'm gonna go back. So, so basically, what we basically did was we turned these head movements into musical values and starting to use this physical, not the biological, but the physical voluntary actions to make music. Basically, Here's an example. What it can do is, right now it can activate effects on my voice, like so. One, one, one. You see the dot moving? When it's moving on the x-axis, it controls reverb. When it moves on the y-axis, one, 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 one. It controls the audio. It can also loop my voice. 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 Okay, Glass. Drop the beat. So this was my first experiment with using wearable technology to make music, and I was very turned on by this. The Glass Beats project won the Google Glass Hackathon, and I started realizing the potential of wearable instruments and physical actions uh, becoming music. And so when I came to Music Tech Fest, uh, I didn't want to use an existing uh, product. I was much more into creating our own prototype. And so I joined forces with Cyril, who's here today, and today, uh, together we created this hat, the musical hat. I would have brought it here, but it's actually in an exhibition right now in Tel Aviv. It's a wearable technology exhibition. The musical hat was uh, made from a designer hat by a designer called Ginger Vibes, who happens to be my girlfriend. <laughs> and what we did was we basically turned this hat into a musical instrument. And as you can see, it has buttons on it that act as a looper. It also has uh, a gyroscope that could track your head movements, just like the previous example, but I also used the same EEG device inside the hat. So this is kind of merging the biological and the physical elements of music technology. So on the one hand, I could use my head movements and I can use these buttons to express myself musically like a musician. But on the other hand, I had the EEG making music out of my brain activity without me really interfering that much. So together they could create kind of a new kind of performance uh, it's kind of a similar video. Do you want me to play it for a second or should we? Yeah? All right. So I'm going I'm to make it quick, though. Uh, this is from Music Tech Fest in Paris, which was amazing. Um, shall I pass it over to you, gentlemen? Oh, that hat. I love it. I just want to touch it for, like, touch one it. moment. Oh. Okay. Right. Thank you very much, guys. Take it. <laughs> hey. Hey. So this is Cyril, and I'm Matan. And this hat was made by Marina, who's filming it right here. Basically, I've been working with uh, EEG. I'm gonna so the go first um, 
example will be of the effects. The effects are controlled by head movements. One second. So let's calibrate. This is up. This is center. So if this will work, this will be without reverb, and this one, one. On and off for the reverb, it's like going up, 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 up through the hat, and then there's delay. So this is right, 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 sha. All right, so the hat basically knows, the gyroscope knows where I am and activates effects. The other feature is the looper, which basically works like, uh, Very similar principle. <laughs> thanks. Um, but this, this, <laughs> thanks. But this time around, the hat was our own uh, wearable technology. It wasn't the Google Glass. It wasn't something that was already there. And then the next step of this was to go beyond the EEG and start incorporating other physical, biological inputs, such as heartbeats. Heartbeats could pretty easily turn into music because they have a rhythmic quality of their own which can be interpreted in many ways. So this is also something I made with Cyril back in London at Music Tech Fest. Uh, it's a prototype <laughs> of a glove. And that glove basically knows your heartbeat and uses your heartbeat to make musical patterns. So what we did was we crossed the heartbeat and the EEG brainwaves to create a show out of the brainwaves and the heartbeat together. We called it Biosynth, for biological synthesizer. And this is actually something I keep on developing constantly. I just had a show at a Microsoft event I mentioned earlier, and that show was about incorporating all these things at once. So you had a heartbeat, an EEG, heart, um, an EEG brainwave reader, and you had semantics in the background running the sound through sand and water. Um, this is another photo, <coughs> photo of that glove. And the last and third, and basically for me most important aspect of uh, music technology nowadays is the accessibility issue. When you think about music technology, I think one of the greatest assets we can kind of uh, hone is to make music accessible to as many people as possible, to make music something that anyone can enjoy and anyone can use to express themselves. And when you think about this, there's like a pyramid, the music accessibility pyramid, I call it. At the very top of this pyramid, there are professional musicians. Professional musicians have gear and uh, theory and technical know-how, and they use all these things to create basically whatever they want to. Then there's amateurs who are hobbyists, people who are uh, keen on making music. They also have gear, they also have uh, knowledge, and they create music in their spare time. Then you have non-musicians that are basically people who are never, uh, never played music before and probably want to and can if they only choose to try. But then there's another layer, the base of the pyramid, which is very often uh, neglected and ignored. And these are the people with special needs, the special needs population. Because for these people, many times, making music is a much greater challenge than we can even imagine. Like for us, even if you've never played an instrument in your life, if you really want to play the guitar or start drumming, you know, take a lesson, buy an instrument, that's all it is. You just, you know, it's only about your ambition and your determination. But for some people, it's about much more than that. Physical and cognitive issues make it much harder for people to really express themselves musically. And this is where technology can really come in and change things. So I'd like to speak to you before I finish here uh, about a project we made that was all about connecting the top and the bottom of the pyramid. So bringing professional musicians who are basically suffering from all kinds of disabilities and trying to create a new kind of um, modus operandi for music technology for special needs. This was called Discotech, which stands for Disability Community Technology. And it was the first hackathon of its kind dedicated completely to the creation of music technology for special needs. This was organized in Tel Aviv uh, in March this year by uh, my own company, Shift, that I mentioned earlier, and an Israeli NPO called Imagined, which is uh, directly associated with the special needs population. And what we did was we brought four different musicians that had four different challenges, four different needs. And we brought teams of hackers and makers. Two of them are actually here today with me. And we started creating prototypes for these guys to express themselves musically in new ways. And before I finish, I'd like to show you a short video that describes this event, um, which was now, uh, after the first round, 
we're planning to make it all over the world. We're planning to do more and more of these kind of uh, initiatives. So Disco Tech, check it out. <laughs> Second, full screen it. Discotech stands for Disability Community Technology. The idea was to take four musicians with special needs to enable them to fulfill all their fantasies and musical dreams. We have four different musicians with four different challenges, four different teams working on four different floors to create four working prototypes. I was born uh, without a hand. I've always wanted to be able to play so I can perform by myself. The main challenge was to build the actual extension and at the same time to make the feel and the sound of the actual strumming of the guitar pick to sound like an actual arm. When I was 18 I been uh, through an, a snowboarding accident. Since then I'm on a wheelchair. We are trying to combine few instruments together. Uh, an harmonica and a microphone and a special kind of guitar. Everything will be connected to a looper. It's all modular that you can actually disconnect and connect it back. So my project here is to be a one-man band. Roy now is 18 years old. We discover when he was 15 months that he has a brain tumor. After the operation, we discovered that he's blind. Also, he became autistic. And after um, two months, he started to play. Because Roy is handicapped and he has a weakness all of his left side, he play with uh, his right hand with four fingers and the left hand with only one finger. What we did is we used one finger he has on his left hand. And whenever he uh, hits a note, we turn it into a chord by supplying him the ability to set the type of the chord using his legs. Ofer Green is a very talented electronic musician. He was a student of mine. He has Mahado Joseph disease. When I met him, he could still move a little bit and talk a little bit. And uh, after a while, his situation worsened. We will create a system that will send MIDI notes to the, the program so he can write scores. There's going to be the camera that follows the eyes, functions as a joystick. He can use his right pinky. This is going to be his click. And the music that he hears inside his head can get on the computer and from there to your ears. We have here 3D printers, electronics, and Arduino. Everybody's a musician and a programmer and a mathematician. And designers and the most talented, brilliant people. Wow, so it was kind of fun, you know, like I'm hacking and in the background people are jamming in different, you know, prototypes all over. It was really fun. All the people that came here, they are volunteers. It's a project for them, and for me, it's more than a project. It's my son, and this is his life. These four people represent so many people out there that will need these things and can benefit from them in the long term. It's good for people with special needs, but it's also good for hobbyists, it's also good for children, and it's also good for professional musicians. The main goal and ambition here is to make music accessible to as many people as possible. I've, n I've never even thought that I could play. I never even thought about it. Said it was easy. Music has been my uh, psychologist, it's been my uh, lover, it's been my best friend. It saved me, it really saved me. Said it was easy. I think music is the most powerful medium you know in the world and when you combine that with technology which is uh, a massive enabler i think that's the perfect blend the main idea behind this event is to create continuity without boundaries i really really hope it's not the last event i really hope that it will uh, grow not just in israel but everywhere. Disco tech is going to help a lot of people. Rock on.
Thank you. So just to, to wrap things up, um, we spent four months uh, producing this event, and now I've been touring for around two months, doing different things, but mainly for me it's been about promoting this and trying to create more of this kind of events all over the world. And if you want to get in touch for any of these things uh, at all, this is my information. I thank you for your time, and I hope we can make a great future together for all of us. Have a great time. Matan, thanks. Amazing stuff.